Russia's domestic policies began to shift almost immediately after the predictable outcome of the presidential election. The initial changes are so significant that they must entail political adjustments as well. They strike directly at the implicit social contract that has formed the basis of Russia's stability over the past many decades. Now, however, Russian President Vladimir Putin has taken a sword to the social safety net inherited from the Soviet past that was untouched even during the shock therapy era of the early 1990s. The retirement age will be quickly increased from the current 60 years to 65 years for men and from 55 years to 63 years for women. The so-called social retirement benefit paid to all elderly people, even those who were never employed or contributed to the retirement fund, will now be made only to men and women who survive until they are 70 and 68 respectively. Russia's demographic and financial situation has made this change inevitable for quite some time. By 2030, Russia's population will decrease by 3.3 percent, and by 2050 by 10.4 percent from today's 146.9 million, according to a 2017 forecast by the United Nations. This depopulation trend cannot be reversed by immigration, since both the authorities and the public are anxious to limit it. In any case, Russia is not a destination for the global migration flows, which are oriented toward more attractive countries. At the same time, the average life expectancy for Russian men and women has grown quite significantly, from 59 years and 72 years respectively in 2000 to 67.5 years and 75.6 years in 2017. The timing for announcing these painful measures was chosen well. Russia's presidential elections were over, and the next parliamentary election was more than three years away. The media have been careful to present the reforms as purely the idea of Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev's government. Mr. Putin had absolutely nothing to do with them. Even so, the political risks are enormous. The limits of the public's trust in President Putin are untested, along with its willingness to combine that trust with the belief that the government can do anything apart from or against his will. Mr. Putin himself had spoken many times against raising the retirement age, notably in 2005, when he declared flatly that this decision will not be taken while I am president. It is quite evident that the retirement reform was deliberately announced in its harshest version with the intention of significantly watering it down in the autumn during a parliamentary debate. President Putin will almost certainly play a leading role in this process. Mr. Putin's media spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, already was asked whether the president would veto the retirement age law and that he has replied with great relish that it was too early to say. In any case, before these emergency austerity measures become a trial for Mr. Putin, they will be a trial for Mr. Medvedev. The Prime Minister will be the guinea pig in this policy experiment. If he succeeded in implementing the reforms in close to their original shape, Mr. Medvedev's political position would strengthen, and he may dare to turn his ambitions to something bigger. If he fails, he will play the familiar kamikaze role that the Russian public often ascribes him. Make as many irreversible, unpopular, but necessary decisions as possible, and then leave. In such a case, the man who replaces him would be Mr. Putin's most likely successor, assuming there is no radical regime change in the meantime. You're watching Global Trends Video Reports by Geopolitical Intelligence Services. For full report, go to gisreportsonline.com where you can find more customized intelligence briefings, reports, and presentations. GIS was founded in 2011 by HSH Prince Michael of Liechtenstein to provide business leaders, senior managers, and policymakers with unbiased, scenario-based geopolitical forecasts to inform their strategic decision-making.